Hi, I'm Lynn Langett for Dun & Bradstreet. In this upcoming presentation, we're going to take a look at using data to grow a business. The scenario we're going to talk about is fictitious, but it's very, very similar to ones that I see in the real world all the time. So it's a solar energy firm that's wanting to go from regional to national sales growth. We're going to do this using the lens of Dun & Bradstreet data and Microsoft Power BI. So I have lots to show you, so let's get started. First, to understand the fictitious scenario. The company is Solar Family, and it is run by a couple, Ken and Lisa Bright, and they're making really efficient solar energy systems. Currently, they're doing business in New Mexico, and they're selling directly to homeowners. But they have ambitious growth plans. They want to sell directly to contractors, and they want to sell nationwide. In Solar Family, they have data professionals, Maria, who's a DBA, and Devin, who's their business analyst. Can either of these data professionals help Solar Family to grow its business? Well, they have a plan, and their plan is to use a combination of publicly available data and Dun & Bradstreet data. The process that they've identified starts with public data available via the U.S. Census. So what they're wanting to do is they're wanting to identify the fastest growing residential and business construction regions in the United States. And they think they can do that with census data. Then they, after they identify those regions, they want to identify the high volume construction companies in each region. And they want to apply additional filtering criteria, like whether or not the companies pay their bills on time, what is the annual sales volume of the company, because they only want to target the top companies and others that they know is available in the DNB data. They also want to look at green certified companies because those would be very likely targets or candidates for the product that this company is selling. And then as they filter out their list to get the most highly likely companies to contact, they also want to get the names, emails, and phone numbers of the key contact names within each construction company. And DNB data has all that as well. So first, they have to identify where they're going to get this data from. Now, Devin is going to be on point to aggregate and filter and groom all this data, but he's going to be working with Maria, and he's going to be using Power Query and Power BI. So he's going to start with the census data, and he's going to look for construction permits and try to identify which regions in the U.S. have the most construction permits. Then, once he has those regions, he's going to work with Maria to get a subset of the full Dun & Bradstreet company list, which they've purchased for use in their company. And then he'll take that subset and then he'll match it to a contact file that he'll have access to because, again, Maria has authorized and paid for that information from the web. So in the first demo, you're going to see how Devin uses Power Query going against CSV files from the U.S. Census Bureau to get a list of the top five U.S. states that have new construction permits over the time period that he's searching for. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to start with publicly available data and use the new Power BI tools in Excel to turn that data into something meaningful for your business. So to get started, we're going to use some data sets from the U.S. Census Bureau uh, website. And this is related to our scenario of finding information about potential customers who have had new construction. So this is the main U.S. Uh, Census Bureau, and I've taken some time to find some data of interest. And that data of interest is going to be around new building permits. Specifically, I want to use the data to find out where in the United States there are um, concentrations of new building permits and then I want to add more meaning to that data as I whittle down the data set. So uh, most of the data on these sites is in a, a CSV format and one of the data sets of interest just to show you what it looks like looks like this. So if you look at it it's really difficult to make any meaning out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this data set into the Power BI tools inside of Excel and we're going to start with Power Query and we're going to transform it. Now for the purposes of the demo that I'm showing you here is I've done some iteration because the idea of the tool in, in Excel is that you can explore and learn how to make sense for your particular scenario. 
And so you spend some time going back and forth, trying things out, uh, making changes to the, the data so it's more meaningful. And um, you know, again, I've done some of the steps in advance just to, to speed up the demo. So to start, I'm going to go to Excel 2013 with Power Query, which as of this recording is a beta, and so you need to download Power Query and install it. And I'm going to say from web to bring that data into Power Query to work with so that I can uh, filter shape and make it more meaningful. And I'm going to paste that URL in. I'm going to say OK. And that's going to load the data into a single column. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is in my Query Editor window, I'm going to right click on the top column to see what options are available for manipulation on this data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this data by the delimiter. I'm going to split the column by the delimiter. And I have the option to pick my delimiter and how I want to split it. So in looking at the underlying data, it has multiple columns, so I want it at each occurrence of the delimiter, and I'm going to click OK. And that looks pretty good, but if I further examine the data, I can see that the first column appears to be header information. So inside of Power Query, that's really easy to fix. I can just say, use first row as headers. But you can see that if you turn on the advanced options, you have the scripting language, and that's done through the settings available. Another important aspect of the Query Editor is that each transformative step is listed. And so if you either did something that didn't work properly or you want to configure it, you can either get rid of it or you can configure it through here. So it, that's what I meant when I talked about the interactive nature of exploring um, this type of data, which is really useful when you're working with data that you don't own because a lot of times you have to kind of play around with it to, to get meaning out of it. So, uh, so far we've got some codes, um, and we've got it split, and let's see what else I need to do here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to perform an unpivot action, and um, each of these codes contains statistical data that I'm interested in, but I want to get the aggregate information rather than the detail, so I'm going to select all the columns except the first one, which gives me the, my geography code, and I'm going to right click on here, and I'm going to say unpivot. And you can see now all the values are added together or aggregated, which is what I'm going to want for my particular scenario. And again, this is something that took me a little bit of time to figure out, but once you get to this point, it's really quick to make the transformation inside of Power Query. The next thing that I want to do is for this value column, I want to change the type from the default, which is text, to number, because this is a um, number that I want to aggregate on. And you can see that it's indicated in Power Query by uh, the italicized and um, right aligned nature, just like it is in Excel. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this query to something more meaningful. And I'm going to call it data, because this is my raw data. Now I'm not done yet, because although this is the data that I want, this is the number of permits by location, I need to have some reference data because these are of course just codes and I need to be able to translate this into something meaningful. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in another data source from uh, my same original source. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to set the first row as a header. Now these are my activity codes or the, the type of activity that is being measured by the census data. So what I want to do here is I want to split this column. Now this one is a little bit different because it's not comma separated, rather it's a fixed width. I want to split the column by number of characters. And I've determined in looking at the data that this is uh, 9 for the code. And I want to do this at the leftmost delimiter. And now I want to change the name here to data item. I want to split this column as well because I just want the dictionary. And again, by examining the data, I determined that the field of interest is 106 characters. And the rest of this we are not interested in, so I'm going to remove the column. Now you'll notice I have a series of steps over here, as I was saying. And if I had made a mistake or something, I could just get rid of this, and I'll just do that. So I'll show you what it looks like. And that column comes back. So it's a very forgiving environment. And the next thing that we want to do is change the name here. 
And the last thing that we want to do is we really only want one item out of here. This might seem like a lot of work, but I'm going a little bit slower than I normally would do to a demo. It could be quite quick if I um, were just filtering the data. Is I just want to see this one item, new private housing units authorized by building permit uh, type issued. And so now this is my lookup table, which I'm going to call data dictionary for the type of activity. Now you'll notice inside of Excel, my query is uh, titled Data Dictionary, but it doesn't change the sheet name. So just something for you to remember when you're working with this. If you Also, if you made a mistake and you needed to go back and filter and shape some more, you could do that, and I'll show you what that looks like. And that just brings back the query editor window. So again, it's a very interactive kind of environment. Now we're not quite done because we have the code for the the data item, but we don't have the code for the FIPS, which is the location. So we're going to bring in yet another public data set, which is very similar to what this previous one was. It's a data dictionary. Here's the codes and here's the locations. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a split by delimiter. And that splits the code from the location. And then we want to split the second column at the comma. And that removes the state from the county or the other location. Notice where there is where it is a uh, United States or the state, the, the state is null. We want to filter out the United States because we don't need ag information aggregated to the United States. We want to see information at the state level in our particular scenario. And because we don't want to see county level information, we're just going to select null. We no longer need this column, so we can remove it. And now we're going to rename this so that it's more meaningful. This is our code, which is called FIPS in the source data. And this is our state. And let's check our data type here. It's set to text, so let's set this as a numeric. And let's rename this to FIPS. And let's load this. And since we're going to be joining on FIPS, let's go ahead and check our data type here as well, because data types have to be compatible for joining. Again, let's set this to number. Say done. And now we're ready to combine these three uh, imports to get something meaningful. As we get ready to do the merge, I'll remind you of the goal, which is to narrow down where the majority of the building permits are in the United States by state so that we can then take that information and go and get more data and create a prospect list. So to combine these three inputs, we're going to click on the merge and we're going to start by merging the data with the data dictionary. New private housing units. And you can see that we have out of the 162,000 input rows, we have uh, a little over 3,000 matches. So that's going to be our first merge. And here's our result. We've got our FIPS code. We've got our attribute, we've got our value, and then we have a join table. Uh, this is the indicator of a join table, and you can see it's in light green here. Now by default, an outer join is performed. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to select from the join table the data item. And you can see there's two options here. There's an expand, which is show me the information from the related table, or aggregate, which is sum up. And we want to see the detailed information here. Now again, because this is an outer join, we're not interested in the null values. We only want to see the matched values. And we're going to say done. And we're going to merge the merge uh, on the FIPS column with the FIPS so that we can find out which locations. We can see that we have 51 matches. So here we have the, our, our original uh, merge. And then here we have the merged information. And just like before, we can expand or aggregate. And of course, we want to see the state information. That's the point. And just like before, it was an outer join, so we want to get rid of the nulls. And so now we can see the number of new building permits by state. But the very last thing that we want to do is we want to sort this so that we can see which states are going to be our target states. So this is the number of permits. So let's make this more clear by renaming it. And then we'll just do a simple sort. So by sorting on descending, we can see that Texas has the largest number of building permits based on this source, source data. And the last thing is we're really only interested in the top five states. That's what we're going to start for targeting. 
So we're going to say OK. And now we can see that Texas, Florida, California, North Carolina, and Washington have the largest number of new building permits. And so we can take this data set and then we can go and get more data, which will be done in subsequent videos, to get a rich list of prospects.